Stage set. Bring in the props. Lights. Cue inner city soundtrack. Sound rolling. Curtain raises. And action. Intro boy one. Enters from stage left. He's a 10 year old dark Chinese Hispanic looking kid who is infatuated with boys to men and 90s hip hop and for some reason really loves magic. He approaches Mike. Clears throat. Pauses for dramatic effect. Claps and begins poem. <clears throat> Flashback, born and raised in West Los Angeles in a neighborhood that was 75% African American. Was told my blood was a mixture of Chinese and Spanish that made Filipino from an island that was in Asia, but told I was not Asian. Babysat by Hispanic women who spoke Spanish to their children and that included me. Now go ahead and tell me about your identity crisis growing up. And it didn't help that the one store on the corner sold 40s Mexican and Chinese food. I knew it was a problem when the Santa Carne Asada Chow Mein and liquor became a scent that was familiar. Even my nose got confused. Cut. Director's note. Those were lines from a poem back in 09, the first time my poetry coach asked me to write about my identity. Don't you find it strange that I was unable to write about who I was or my upbringing without props that resembled neon open signs and metal gated doors covering scratch glass windows, lotto tickets and cheap liquor, dirty magazines and ice cream where the cashier knew our first name and would hand us a free piece of candy covered in chili powder on Fridays sold blacks and zigzags to underage lost boys in our neighborhood where you could see a liquor store from a liquor store. See, this is what normal looked like to a teenage first generation Filipino American dreamer with a crazy imagination and like way too much free time. Directors note, typically in an average stage play, the narrative of the main character unfolds through a series of events leading to an inciting incident, climax, and resolving in a realization, triumph, victory, failure, and or death. This happens either between other characters or a self-conflict between his own mind or body. But listen, to my knowledge, there was no stage play in history where the setting and the props on the stage of the thing that tries to kill the main character is genius. Plot twist. Not only does the main character not number the props and the setting of the thing trying to kill them, he uses it that's a thing he thinks is trying to keep him alive and sane. This brilliant villain. It's the perfect murder mystery slash drama with a mediocre storyline and tragic ending. Play continues. Boy one is shopping around. Setting, same liquor store. Prop and wardrobe change. Boy is now 21 and sees some cans shaped like how sodas look. Only difference, these are tall cans and they're decorated like comic books. Infused with energy drinks and just so happen to have liquor in them. Side note, said prop contains 12% alcohol. Comparative side note, an average beer only has 4.5% alcohol. Fun side note, this bright can of energy, we'll call it energy one, is placed right next to the soda pop. I mean the soda props, you know the props shaped like soda right next to where the soda's stocked and they're labeled $2.50. If this were real life, there would be reason for concern, but this is a play, y'all. Chill, let's continue rolling. Action. Boy One becomes enamored by the effects of Energy One for great reasons. Primarily because he becomes a better dancer, Avi. Secondly, because the killer, I mean the liquor, allows him to talk to the other characters without feeling anxious. Scene. Set change. 2 a.m. bar closes. Boy One has had five too many liquid props and the lights are dimmed. Cue fake truck he was driving. Cue Muppet cops and fake sirens. Cue fake sobriety tests on fake sidewalk. Make sure he still knows he can't walk straight. Make sure it's still clear he doesn't know who the killer is. Cue fake cuffs and fake backseat of fake cop car. Cue set change to jail cell and paper men sitting quiet and regretful. Cue the worst peanut butter and jelly sandwich he's ever had. Cue sped up clock to show a day and a half passing and picking up his belongings from a ziplock. Undim lights, it's morning time. Set change. Boy one is now old enough to buy liquor without being carded. He walks in, sighs and says, just because you're familiar doesn't make you home and just because you sell candy doesn't make you safe. Final scene, intro boy two, enters stage right. 
He's a 10-ish year old, dark Chinese, Hispanic looking kid who's infatuated with Drake and trap music and for some reason is also really into magic. The cashier calls him by name. He walks up and grabs a piece of candy covered in chili powder on a Friday. Boy one sees himself in boy two for obvious reasons, but he doesn't say anything. The curtain lowers. See, I'm not really sure if I'm gonna stick to that ending. The sequel and the patterns are subject to change based on boy one's realizations. But I guess we're in there to be continued. It's a wrap.